Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. All right, so this video is oodles of fun because we are going to finally figure out some different unique ways to use those drops that we have in our stash because I can't feel like I'm all alone. I know there are a bunch of you out there that have many different types of these kinds of enamel dots. The drops I'll be using today are the Pops of Color from scrapbook.com. This is the Brights collection, I believe. Uh, so super cute and pretty and pearlescent. And I've had a lot of different drops in my day, but I have to say I really like the consistency of these. They're very smooth, very easy to use. They come out nicely. There's a bunch of them out there that are similar, but this one, I really the consistency is very different. Anyway, those are gonna be what I choose. Now my first type of unique way to use these enamel drop drops, these pops of color, is to label some of your plastic things with them. So right here, I have these large ink daubers, and I love them, but if I stored them like this, they would leave a mark on the top of the glass and I would get my inger, my ingers all thinky. <laughs> my fingers all inky. Um, so what I did was I took the enamel dots, uh, the pops of color rather, and I just used it to color code my ink daubers. So now I can tell which colors which when I open up the case. So it makes it very simple. So I'm just gonna show you really quick how I did this. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can probably use a paintbrush, I did not, but I took a makeup foam uh, little sponge. And um, here, let me show you quick. If you do get these, you're gonna twist off the top and remove an inside piece that's gonna let you use them. They come so that they don't spill all over, which is awesome. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to place a little bit of this uh, Pops of Color right here onto my ink dabber. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm just going to kind of touch it and kind of spread it out. So some of the lighter colors when I did this, they blended in too well. So I couldn't really quite see what the color was. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to cover it completely. I don't care if it's not smooth, that doesn't bother me. I just needed some sort of uh, you know, color to let me know what this ink dauber was. So they aren't gonna match the ink colors perfectly, but I'm gonna know that this is a uh, orange ink dauber and there's the rest of the colors. All right, let's move into the next idea here. I love the look of a wax seal on the back of envelopes when you send them out. I think that's so much fun. This is another way that you can do that. So what I did was just drop down some of the pop of colors and I took my stamp. Now this stamp right here, it has a P in it. It's really pretty. Um, when you see the actual image, it's really nicely. So looks really nice. So I tried to do that, but the consistency of these is different than wax in that it didn't hold. I think there's a couple ways that you can try this. Like it didn't give the impression of the actual thing. So um, I'm sure that you can try it, uh, maybe let it cure a little bit. I tried that, didn't quite work, maybe heating it. So there's, you know, just have some fun experiment. But what I did want to show you is how I planned on using it anyway. So I have this really cool flat looking uh, wax seal. I'm going to place just a little twine on there that's gold and kind of off-white make a little bow with it, just place it down. This, uh, These pops of color are like glue as well. So you can just put it on there and it'll stick once it dries. So I get that where I want it positioned. I'm gonna trim off the uh, twine just to get it down there and um, you're left with this super cute backing of an envelope. I thought it was cute. You can also put another drop of that same color right over the center of your bow and that will make sure it stays put a little bit better. If you're gonna hand deliver, this is probably sufficient. So that is how I did the backs of my envelopes. So that was a lot of fun. I just finished it off with a little bit of glitter on there just to give that the back of the envelope just a little bit more sparkle. And um, yeah, so that's another idea for our drops. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So for this idea, um, I'm gonna keep this in here because I think that if you play around enough, you're gonna find a technique that could work. In fact, the way I'm gonna show you this worked, but um, I didn't end up using this for a finished card. So I'm gonna first put down in rainbow order a drop of each of the enamel dots. I'm gonna do that because I'm going to take my large 
um, spreader from scrapbook.com. It's for spreading out embossing paste. And I am going to spread this across my sheet, my, my cardstock here. So right now I'm just using some Accent 100 pound cardstock uh, for this. It doesn't, it did warp it a little bit because it is a, a little bit of a liquid type of uh, medium. So I'm going to take my spreader here and I am just going to spread it all over the card and you're gonna get this really fun. I pressed a little bit too hard in my opinion after I played around with these quite a bit, I realized that I pressed a little too hard, but I think that was just kind of fun to try so you can play with that. This one though is what I was really looking for in my mind's eye. So I took them again in rainbow order and I'm just going to scribble them onto my cardstock. In hindsight, and if you try this, I would recommend watercolor cardstock. It's a little bit easier to work with in that it doesn't warp as much. This didn't warp that much, but you know, when I was finishing off my cards, it just wasn't as easy to um, get them flattened out. So here, like I said, just gonna scribble those on. Now, if you try this technique, I would recommend that you move quickly because if you um, keep the other card stuck on there too long, it starts to stick because the glue, it dries pretty quick. So you wanna make sure you do what you're doing and then move it off. So that is the finished result of these. I love the spine kind of looking, uh, almost like a jellyfish in there. I love that, I think that's so fun. This is how I finished off the first card. Um, just, you know, maximizing that rainbow look. The rainbow dye is from Katherine Poehler, um, one of my favorites. With the second background panel, I made this really fun shaker card. Uh, just put a, an embossed sentiment on there, thinking of you, and then just pick some clear sequins and a cloud dye for that. All right, let's move on to changing embossing paste color. So I have some all to new embossing paste here. I love the consistency of this type, but I find that when I add reinkers to it, it gets a little bit too watery. But with uh, these drops here, I'm not gonna get that watery consistency. I'm gonna actually keep it the exact same pretty much. Um, it's also going to mix very nicely. It does, of course, lighten up the original color of the pops of color that you're gonna use, but that's to be expected when you're mixing it with white. If you want it a little darker, just add a little bit more like I did, and I'm gonna get this really pretty blue. So now I have uh, a consistency of embossing paste. I don't need to buy every color of embossing paste out there. I could um, just ch change it, alter it with what I have. So now I'm gonna pull out this dots, excuse me, the stars stencil here. This is a, from scrapbook.com as well. And I'll list everything I'm using in the video below in case you're curious if there's something that you have your eye on. I'm gonna spread this out all over and I'm gonna get a really fun look. If this is just your standard spreading embossing pa paste over a stencil. Uh, technique. Nothing too earth shattering there. But I was just really excited that I got to mix up the color a little bit. So I'm making some blue stars here. And of course the reveal is the most fun part. So the next thing I'm going to do with this is just to jazz it up a little bit. I'm going to pour some embossing powder over it in this sparkly darker blue. And you can do that with this because it's still wet. And so um, optimize your embossing paste whenever you're doing that because you can kind of mix up the look for what you are going for based on the fact that it still stays wet. I didn't want to lose all of that light blue color. I just wanted to add a spark of something else. So I'm just going to kind of flick the embossing powder all over it. And then I'm going to take that to my trash can and get rid of the excess and heat set it. So when you're heat setting this embossing paste, you can kind of see it puff up just a little bit more. So that's a lot of fun as well. The one on the right hand side of the screen right now, I'm going to keep that uh, for now plain blue, but I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle later. Okay, the next technique is to use your pops of color for filling in some of those colored or the uh, image pieces of your stamps. So this one I did the horn on there. So you can do them on intricate pieces of the images or you can just take them and go nuts on your card like I did here and just add a pink cloud. <laughs> That's what I'm doing to my card is I'm taking this really pretty pink color. Of course, any color you chose for this rainbow themed car would, card would work, but I'm going to take the pink and you're going to see uh, the end result here is just a nice raised look. So you can use it for snow, you can use it for um, waves, you can use it for pretty much anything you want to just kind of make pop up on your card. So I'm going to show you there, there's the um, finished card 
and you'll get to see some close-ups here in just a second um, it dries like I said these pops of color dry really really hard I love that I don't get the peaks on them as much although that is a technique uh, problem not so much a medium problem so um, but I really do love how how much uh, how hard they are. I had something put on top of enamel dots and they didn't change shape. They didn't flatten out. So that was really cool. And there's some close-ups. Thank you so much for stopping by and for hanging out with me. I hope this gave you some new ideas to put into your toolbox so that you can use up some of those supplies that we all just had to have. I will put everything I used in the video down in the description box. You can also find a link tree link where you can find me on other social media platforms as well as my Amazon storefront. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more from me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.